You need to plan your indie game. It'll keep you organized, motivated, and in scope. I, and many other game devs, use something called Trello for this. Trello is this really cool web-based project management tool. It's free and a lot of indie devs tend to use it, so yeah. Head over to Trello.com and sign up with your email. Then when you're done being bombarded by Trello trying to get you to buy business class, make a new board named after your indie game and find a sick background picture. Okay, so the basic workflow of Trello is make a card for each task and make a list for each state of the tasks. So I create a task called player movement and when I start working on it, I move it to the doing list and then when it's done, I move it to the done list. Shocking. Some devs don't like having a done category and decide to just archive their cards when they're finished. If you decide to do this, don't delete your cards, just archive them because then you can always bring them back to the board if you ever need to. Okay, awesome. This works fine, but I'd like to do a lot more with it. I'm going to start by creating a bunch of categories so that we don't have this massive to-do list. Figure out what works for you, but I normally use these categories for my boards. With this system, my to-do category becomes kind of like a do this week category. Okay, next I'm going to add some labels. So at the moment, you can tell what category everything's in. But when you start moving things to the doing and do this week category, you can't tell. So if you click on a card and then go to labels, we can create our own custom labels to identify certain cards. I normally create one label per category. So as an example, I have one for programming, one for graphics, etc. I also create a few for sort of time estimates, like short, moderate, and long. This comes in useful when, say, I only have an hour today to work on my game. I don't really want to get started on a super long task, so I'll just pick one of the shorter ones. You can assign and remove labels by clicking on the card and then selecting whatever labels you want to add or remove. Last up on my list of basic features, we have checklists. This is pretty self-explanatory. You just pretty much click on the card and create a checklist. If stuff on your checklist gets to become too big, you can just convert it to a card and it'll appear on your board. You can also see how much you have done in this little progress bar over here. Alright, so that pretty much clears up Trello's most basic features. But it still has so much to offer, so let's get to the rest of it. First off, there are these things called power-ups. If you're not wasting, I mean paying, 10 bucks a month for Trello business class, well, you only get one of these per board. Working solo, I haven't found much need for these, but in a team, I could totally see how they'd be useful. Like, as an example, there's this one that integrates GitHub with Trello. You can attach branches, issues, commits, all that stuff. There's also this one called daily updates where you can inform your team of what you're working on on a daily basis. Yeah, very cool. Next up, we have automation. Trello comes integrated with this thing called Butler, which will serve to automate tasks for you. If you've been working on your board long enough, it'll actually give you suggestions on what you can do to improve your workflow. Kind of like power-ups, I haven't found much use for this when I'm working alone, but I still see endless possibilities for teams who use this. Butler lets you automate stuff by creating buttons, doing stuff based on rules or card due dates, or just going off the calendar. Let me show you an example. Let's say that I want to make it so that whenever I add the graphics label to a card, my artist automatically becomes a member of it. Well, I can just go into Butler's rules and check whenever the graphics label is added to a card, add my artist to it as a result. And speaking of adding members to cards, you can have different members of your team join certain cards. When you add someone to a card, it basically signifies that they're responsible for that task and they should be the one to finish it. To do this, you just have to click on a card, select members, and then select whatever member of the team you want to add to the card. Once again, this doesn't really make sense for solo devs because you'd just be adding yourself to every single card. Alright, so earlier I brushed over the concept of due dates in Trello. If you click on a card and go over to due dates, you can assign a day of the year that the card should be done by. This is really useful to keep you going at a good pace during your development cycle. Sick. The last thing I want to cover is public, private, and team boards. Team boards are shared with your whole team, while private boards are shared with people on your team that you specifically select. And of course, public boards can be seen by anybody, but only edited by your team. This honestly just comes down to personal preference, especially for solo devs. Maybe you want people to see the progress you're making, maybe you don't. Regardless of what you choose, you can switch it up here at any time. And yeah, that's about it. You're a Trello professional now. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. And yeah, hit like if you like, also hit like if you dislike, and please subscribe. And please have a great day.